Hi, I am Piyush Singh and in this video I will present a comparison between different power sources used in arc welding. More specifically, a comparison will be made between DCEN, DCEP and AC power sources. This figure here shows the types of electrical currents. There is alternating current which periodically changes direction or polarity and while doing so the magnitude becomes zero several times per second depending upon the frequency of the current. In contrast we have direct current. Direct current is a unidirectional flow of electrical charge. Its magnitude may remain constant or vary periodically in which case it is said to be pulsating. Then there is variable current which as is obvious from the name itself may choose any direction or magnitude. The power source in electrical arc welding can be either direct current DC or alternating current AC. The DC power sources can again be of two types depending upon the polarity namely direct current electrode positive DCEP and direct current electrode negative DCEN. I will discuss these a little later but first let us compare DC and AC power sources. In comparison with AC power sources, DC power sources are the more preferred choice for arc welding. DC produces more stable arc as the current is unidirectional and hence produces a smoother welding output with less spatter. In case of AC, the current magnitude reaches zero several times per second depending upon the frequency of the current due to which the arc tends to extinguish and hence becomes difficult to handle. The periodical change in direction of the current makes the arc unstable resulting in higher spatter and inferior weld appearance. Magnetic arc blow also known as arc wonder is the arc deflection caused by distortion of the magnetic field produced by an electrical arc current. Arc blow can cause a number of welding problems including excessive spatter, incomplete fusion, porosity and lower weld quality. Magnetic arc blow is more common in DC welding than in AC welding. The use of AC current significantly reduces arc blow. This is because the rapid reversal of the current induces eddy currents in the base metal and the fields set up by the eddy currents greatly reduce the strength of the magnetic field that cause arc blow. One specific industry for AC stick welding is in shipbuilding, particularly when welding into a corner where arc blow becomes a problem. Another area is maintenance and repair. Maintenance and repair requires work on machines that are magnetized. Also, maintenance and repair work can involve a lot of rusty areas where you don't want high penetration. DC is used in most stick welding applications. Also, it is suitable for overhead and vertical welding. It is commonly used for TIG welding of stainless steel and also when welding thinner materials. AC welding machine is not suitable for welding of sheet metals due to difficulty in starting the arc. DC currents usually require an internal transformer for switching the current, which makes DC welders more expensive. DC does not work well for welding aluminum as it can't produce the necessary high intensity heat. Aluminum also has a tenacious oxide film on the surface and when AC switches to electrode positive, it helps remove the oxide and clean the surface. Bare electrodes cannot be used in AC welding due to difficulty in striking the arc. Only specially designed coated electrodes can be used. Direct current electrode negative is as the name suggests when the electrode is negative and becomes the cathode and the workpiece becomes anode that is a positive electrode. It is also known as straight polarity. In this case the electrons flow from the electrode towards the weld pool and positive ions move across the arc towards the electrode. Most of the heat is generated at the anode and hence this polarity results in deep and narrow welds. It is a preferred choice for thicker materials. 
Direct current electrode positive is also known as reverse polarity. In this case, the electrode becomes anode and greater heat is generated there. DCEP is used for removing an oxide film from the surface of the weld pool or workpiece. The oxide film promotes emission of electrons when the workpiece is negative polarity. As the oxide is depleted, the emission moves to a new location that has a high enough oxide content to sustain the discharge of electrons. This phenomenon is known as oxide cleaning. The arc root or cathode spot where the emission occurs is highly mobile in AC or DCEP and as a result the arc is much less stable than in DCEN. This is also the reason for the wider weld zone. The penetration is low as more heat is concentrated at the electrode. This makes the process more suitable for thin sheets and joints with wider gaps. Let us conclude by comparing DCEN, AC and DCEP. As discussed earlier, the arc root or cathode spot where the emission occurs is highly mobile in AC or DCEP and as a result the arc is much less stable than in DCEN. AC behaves as DCEP in one half cycle and DCEN in the other half cycle. As a result, both the workpiece and the electrode are struck by electrons and ions in alternate half cycles. In DCEN, approximately 70% of the heat is concentrated in the workpiece and the remaining at the electrode. The opposite is observed in DCEP. In AC, heat is equally distributed between the workpiece and the electrode. AC and DCEP are capable of cathodic cleaning, which removes the oxide layer from materials like aluminum. This phenomenon is not observed in DCEN. This makes AC and DCEP the preferred choice for welding materials like aluminum. DCEN has the highest penetration and the narrowest weld zone, while DCEP has the least penetration and the broadest weld zone. The penetration in AC lies between DCEN and DCEP. You may watch other videos by clicking these thumbnails and subscribe to the channel for notification of future videos. Thank you for watching.